Welcome to the Reloading Zone. I'm Frank Maloney, I'm going to be your host. In this four part series, we're going to cover everything you need to know to get off the ground, reclaim brass, or use brand new brass to get the most out of your firearms. All right, so now that we've charged our cases, we're ready to go ahead and seat some bullets, but not so fast. We need to first figure out our best starting overall length. For a pistol, it's not too critical, but for a rifle, it actually is gonna have a whole lot to do with your accuracy. So for your rifle, you have a few different ways to find a good starting overall length. And for overall length, we're talking about the distance from the very tip of the projectile back to the head of the case itself. If you're fortunate enough to find a factory round that runs really well in your rifle and you want to duplicate it or at least use that as a starting point, one of the easiest things to do is match up the bullet that the manufacturer is using as long as they list it on the box and go ahead and buy that component. Then just clone that overall length and you're good to go. So cloning a factory round will certainly get you there, but you're really not getting the full benefit of hand loading by doing that. One of the things that you have to your disposal is varying that overall length and using different projectiles from all over the place to make a round that's specific to your gun. So for our 6.5 Creedmoor, we're gonna go ahead and use these Barnes match burners. We've used the projectile in other experiments and we found it to be super, super accurate, but we've never actually fired a factory round through this gun with this bullet. So we're gonna go ahead and find a good starting point for our overall length. So the best tool on the market to find starting overall length is the Hornady overall length gauge. This particular device has a main housing with a pusher rod housed inside of it. With a special modified case available through Hornady, you can adapt this tool to find the overall starting length for any cartridge on the market. Once we screw that modified case in, we retract our pushing rod and just get it out of the way. The modified case has a very loose neck that allows the bullet to get dropped completely in. Once we have this set up, we chamber the entire device. Hold the red body in, press the gray pushing rod, and as I'm doing this, it's pushing the bullet out of the case into the lands of the rifling. Then we're gonna go ahead, lock down that knurled knob, and pull the tool out. You notice now that the bullet is all the way out of the case and is at the exact position to where this overall length places the O-drive of the bullet directly into the lands of the rifling. What that's gonna ensure is a absolute straight start as it passes down the rifling towards your target, eliminating run out and giving you the most accurate ammunition you can have. Sometimes a round that's jammed all the way into the lands just simply won't chamber. So for that reason, you wanna go ahead and reduce this measurement by about 10 thousandths. There's a special cut in the tool that allows you to get your calipers on and measure that overall length. Once we go ahead and measure that, we want to write this number down. Once we have this number, we want to set up our seating die to create rounds at this overall length. All right, so we just finished finding our overall length to start off with for our rifle rounds. The pistol shooter also has a whole bunch of different techniques at their disposal as well. Just like as in rifle shooting, you can go ahead and clone a known round as long as you know which bullet they're using, and that's a great starting point. If you don't have a factory round that you want to clone, you can go ahead and reference that first page in the manual, and they're gonna go ahead and give you a maximum overall length and a minimal overall length. And you can go ahead and do something right in between there. And you could also use the crimping cannula on your bullet if it has one as a terrific starting point. So now that we've found our starting points, we're gonna go ahead and make a dummy round to make sure that the round that we plan on loading actually will fit in our magazine and cycle through the action. So let's go ahead and set up our seating die. I can't stress this enough. Instructions are included for a reason, read them. Dies from different manufacturers, all set up differently. And depending on if you want that die to crimp or not, is also gonna change the setup process. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that die. So for a bolt action rifle, we generally set this up without any crimp. So the way we're gonna do that for this specific instance is we're gonna go ahead and take a case, place it in our shell holder, run it to the top of the stroke. We're going to back out the seating stem, 
as far as we can to make sure that it doesn't start seating the bullet until we're ready. With that stem all the way out, we screw our die in until it makes contact with the case mouth. Right here at this position is where it's going to start entering the area of the die that would crimp it. So for that reason, we want to back our die out one full turn because we don't want to crimp this round. Holding the die in place, we secure the lock ring. Once our die is secured, we remove our cartridge case and we can just leave it there. Next, we go ahead and pick up our bullet and we start seating it. It's as easy as putting it on top of the case and running it up into the die. That first stroke, we shouldn't feel any resistance at all because we have the seating stem backed all the way out. And that's exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and put it back up. Now we start turning the seating stem down. Eventually that seating stem is gonna meet resistance. The resistance that it meets is going to be the O-drive of the bullet. We'll go ahead and pull this down. The bullet is stuck into the die. That shows you that you're doing it right. We're gonna adjust this down so that's going to start seating. Now we place the bullet on top of the case and place everything up into the die, we're gonna feel a little bit of resistance and that's because our bullet is now starting to seat. We wanna do the guess and check method to where we'll turn this initially in maybe one or two turns and start seating the bullet further into the case. And as we adjust our seating stem down, our overall length is going to get shorter because the bullet is getting pressed into the case. So previously we determined that 2.858 is going to be our optimal starting overall length for our rifle cartridge. So we'll go ahead and pick up our calipers and we're going to go measure and see where we're at. All right, so we're at 2.902, which means we need to drop it down just a little bit more. So being that we're so close, here's where I would start reducing each adjustment. I'd start working in half turn increments at this point. Okay, that half a turn moving just about 20 thousandths. And we'll just continue this process until we get to exactly where we want to be. All right. Well, now that we've achieved our target overall length, it's time to make sure that it fits inside of the magazine. And it does. And then of course, we wanna make sure it also chambers into the gun. Excellent. Now that you've made a dummy round, you confirm that it's going to cycle through the firearm, no problem. It's the exact same process with your cases that have primer and powder. Just be careful not to spill any. So the process of seating pistol bullets is going to be exactly the same, except this time we're going to set our die up to crimp. The reason you might want to crimp is if you have a heavy recoil application, and in this case, we're loading 44 Magnum. So again, refer to your instructions, and we're going to go ahead and look at the section that tells us how to set our die up to crimp. So we're going to go ahead and get our seating die out, and this gets set up with the case in place, just like our rifle die did. I'm going to run that case all the way up, And again, screw the die in until we meet resistance. So at this point, the case has now entered the crimping area of the die. We don't want to crimp just yet because we need to set up our overall length. So we're going to back it out just a turn as we did before. But before we finish, we're going to put that turn back on and maybe even a little more. So from this point, all we need to do is tighten our lock ring, put our bullet in, run it up into the die, and then tighten our seating stem until we meet resistance. Again, once we've met resistance, that's because the seating stem is touching the bullet. Go ahead and get our bullet out of there. And we can tell because we're so far off that we are going to need a very gross adjustment. Let's go ahead and make that adjustment. Okay, can go quite a bit more. Now we're gonna start minimizing our increments. And we're almost at the cannula at this point. Maybe another half a turn or so. Now that we've entered the crimping cannula and we're very close to where we want our overall length to be, we're gonna go ahead and 
loosen that lock ring, and we're going to put that one turn back on the die. That's going to start crimping. Lock our lock ring. Run the cartridge up. And at this point, we should notice our brass is now slightly rolling into that crimping cannula. And that's going to keep our bullet in place during recoil. So now we're just going to go ahead and make sure that this dummy round chambers into the intended firearm. And we're set to start rolling out live rounds. So now you've seen the process to making your own ammunition. Like everyone out there to realize that we really just scratched the surface and we grazed over the information that you're going to find in great detail in manuals like these. While online information is terrific and we always like to see what other shooters are doing, while their recipes may really be appetizing, we want to make sure that we could always find them inside of these manuals. So in this preceding series of videos, we've outlined the process in which to take brass and load your own ammunition that's going to be more precise and less expensive than factory ammunition. I urge everyone out there to supplement this information with the information that you're going to find in the beginning pages of these manuals. In these manuals, you're going to find a reoccurring theme that accurate ammo is also safe ammo. So here's a few tips and tricks that will make sure your rounds are as accurate as can be and will keep you out of hot water. And some of these tips are, eliminate distractions in your reloading room. Your reloading room should be private. It should be free of distractions such as television, the phone. The industry standard is no more than a radio. Before you start pouring powder into a measure, write out a quick sticky note and place it on there so you can keep track of which powder is in there. To minimize the possibility of a double powder charge, I like to keep my cases upside down until they're ready to get powder placed in them. And then once powder is placed in them, I bring them right to the press and see the bullet. For no reason ever should you mix powders. This will not give you a different burn rate. It will only create something very dangerous. Maintain a clean and organized work area. Only keep the components you intend on using at that moment on your reloading bench. Well guys, those are my top five tips and you'll find those and many more in manuals just like this. And you always remember that an accurate round is also going to be a safe round. I'm Frank Maloney. Thanks for checking out the Reloading Zone.